Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, 20 minutes to 8. Well, now we'll, uh, uh, we're joined by Mr. George A.K., who is a legal practitioner. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you so much. Well, we'll start off with this uh, uh, development in Taraba. I mean, one of the headlines this morning was talking about the fact that, uh, uh, having set up that panel, who knows, that uh, the, the acting governor and Governor Suntai may just be faced with impeachment and it's just been going around in circles all shades of opinion about some of this but from what you've seen what legal channels are available if they were to explore could it be could that panel that was set up also have as part of the terms of reference or mandate or can they actually also go ahead and impeach both parties well, uh, impeachment act actually comes under a different heading. That is uh, section 188 of the Constitution. Uh, but uh, the setting up of a panel, medical panel, as a matter of fact, is under section 189. All of them having to deal with, you know, a situation that have to deal with, you know, removal of the governor. And either because of misconduct that is in 188, section 188, or because of incapacity date or whatever. That is on 189. But you see, the Taraba issue is, 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 is quite interesting in the sense that it, even though the uh, commissioner, former commissioner for information, who you people spoke to yesterday on your program, you know, kept talking about uh, permanent incapacitation. I disagree with him to the extent that if we start looking at permanent incapacitation, that section of the Constitution can never be invoked. It cannot be because if you start looking at when somebody is permanently incapacitated, the person would have been dead. What has been happening is like a miniature of what happened with, during the Yaradwa saga, a situation where a particular group of people want to continue to hold on to power because the governor, they say he is very healthy. But the issue here is, is he fit? The issue is, is he fit? Are they used interchangeably, healthy and being fit? You, you, you could be healthy, but not ordinarily. Fit. But you see, there is a demand of the office. So that part of the constitution must be interpreted contextually with regard to what is the constitution expecting the person to do. In other words, we are talking about constitutional <coughs> empiricism. That is the, the reality of the constitution. Look at a typical, typical program of, of, of a governor, for instance. Governor arrives at eight, 8 o'clock, uh, gets, no, gets, sit, gets seated by 8 o'clock. Governor arrives at 8.10, national anthem 8.15, uh, welcome address 8.20 and all of that. I'm trying to tell you how tight it is for a governor. And we are looking at a man that we have seen in several video clips you know, on television where he is being helped to even stand up. Most of the people who said they shook him had to take his hand from wherever it was and all of that. We're also looking at a man who just recently, when he, when he arrived from UK, was telling the people who came to see him that he just came from Abuja. In other words, he has lost orientation. If he has lost orientation with regard to time and place, where he was, where he is, where he possibly will be going to and all of that, yes, on the surface he may look healthy. But we are not talking about is he fit to run the, the, uh, to, the is, is, can he take the demands of that office? Look at uh, somebody like Obama, for instance, some four years ago, he, he was looking quite, quite, quite young as it were, but today he has developed gray hair. That is the demand of such office. Look at our local example, somebody like Fashola. Look at gray hair all over it. In other words, what we are saying is that it, the, the demand is so stringent that the Constitution envisages that the person must not just be healthy, but must be fit. So that idea of uh, the person has to be permanently incapacitated. And again, uh, there was some, some, somebody who mentioned yesterday on your program that uh, Professor Schuttmann uh, so, did, did comment that no doctor is capable of you know, satisfying somebody permanently incap uh, incapacitated. I do not think that that will be the true position of medicine. And I hope that other medical doctors will speak out on that because if, if we continue to look at that, like I said, 
it now means that before somebody can be relieved of his office as a result of that provision of the constitution, I mean by the by the virtue of the provision of that constitution, the person must be in a situation where he cannot move his legs, cannot move his, in short, he's, he will be dead. So in other words, what I what will ad advocate is a contextual interpretation of that provision of the constitution, a situation where the person, even though he may look healthy, but if he is not fit, as certified by the doctor, this medical panel that we are looking at, he invariably should not continue to hold the office. So it is a misnomer to find in Taraba an, a, a governor that sits down in his house, an acting governor that we hear should take instructions from him and continue to take uh, major decisions as agreed by a person who we have seen from a layman's point of view that he has lost orientation. I'm happy you, 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 you watched the program yesterday. Let's go back to some of the questions we posed before uh, Mr. Emmanuel Bello, former Information Commissioner to uh, the government of Taraba State. We, we're trying to see if we can draw some similarities between uh, the Yerda era, uh, the time he was ill, God bless his soul, and uh, the time where, where the Senate came up with the doctrine of necessity, of necessity. Uh, which uh, somehow with the constitution being reviewed, we have seen that uh, in a way that would have sorted out what we are seeing today. Looking at that scenario at that point in time and what we're having today and uh, looking at what played, it, say, played out rather at that point in time when we had the story of a kitchen cabinet and that of a cabal trying to prevent us from knowing the true state of things, would you say these they are similar to that time, knowing full well that we know what uh, Governor Suntai is going through. We have access to so many other issues when he goes out for his medicals and when he comes back and people can see him. So he's not in hiding. It wouldn't seem as if uh, some people have taken charge of office. Yes, yeah, so if, in short, if, I, if it was a calling program yesterday, I would, have, I would have made this point. And the point I was, going to, uh, I was going to make yesterday is that because he said he does not, the commissioner said he does not like a situation where people continue to uh, compare what happened during Yaradua's period with what is happening in Taraba. Indeed, they are very similar. Very, very, we agree that no human circumstances are the same, but they are particularly similar in the sense that this is a miniature play out of what happened at the federal level. A group of people Look, look, look at what, what, what happened when he, he, he came back. He, a, a number of people came to see Governor uh, uh, Suntai. And, uh, and of course, he was like talking to them. That was when he made that statement that he's just coming from Abuja. Look, watch that clip again. You could have seen the, 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 the frown on the wife's face. It's almost like you are not acting this script very well. How can you ever say you are coming from Abuja when you are in Abuja? The whole idea is that they want to keep him there so that whatever happens, they, the governor had said that you should do this. There is no way you can invest, invest, verify from the governor. You cannot investigate what the governor had said, but the will of the governor will be said to have been done by those who are go, going between. And that's exactly what happened during the, the, the Yaradua saga, where a group of people were like, oh no, Yaradua had just finished watching us now. And that, in short, he was one of the people who said, eh, hey, goal, and all of that. Meanwhile, the man was... So the assembly, so, the assembly So and of it, is, it is wrong for him to uh, encourage us to erase this contemporary history because from our analysis we're, we're, of what is happening.